Good. Thumbs yeah. off. And then Mark, you just kind of right. turn yourself off, huh? a little bit towards cloth. Yeah, that, that's perfect. All right, camera rolling. Just say and spell your name too for the editor so we get it right on the lower third. Uh, Mark Matthews, M A R K M A T H E W S. Um, give me a, a history about this break. Basically the history of this break is that the bodyboarders had been surfing it for about five years. Breaks off the opening of Botany Bay, which is real close to our home here, but uh, we, we never knew about it. Oh, freaking exhausted. Let's go, huh? Come on. <laughs> Let's go seize the day. And it wasn't until we saw in a bodyboard movie the footage of it, it was like, wow, we, we need to go and surf this way. A little bit more. From about 10 years ago, we just basically went there on every single swell we could find and uh, just started to figure out that it's actually surfable because this wave, it's like ugly, dangerous slab barrels. It just looks way too close to the rocks to even be surfable. But through a, a tough trial and error process, we kind of figured it out to how to surf it then. And now it's, it's basically one of the most amazing waves on the planet. Stop emails and text. <laughs> Connest director, mate. I'm not even Connest director. <laughs> All I'm supposed to say is yes, the comp's on. I said that already. He's he's just gonna be glued on his phone all day, isn't he? Moran? No. Matthews? Yeah. Yeah. Only surfers can access down through the event site. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go out in about an hour and a half. Yeah, so at the moment, there's, it seems like there's so much up in the air. The swell forecast is, is sort of changing, you know, every six hours. The, the swell's definitely there, but the winds and, and all kinds of things are changing a little bit, so it's really like playing with my mind. My only saving grace, like, this is just trying, me trying to make myself feel better. As bad as it is, if we wake up and the forecast is wrong. You've got the whole world that excited to watch this event and then they're just that excited to watch it next year. The surfers who I've invited, I've got like 70% confirmed that they're coming. The top guy that I was dying to get is Shane Dorian. He's kind of like really up in the air. I had to send him a few photos of what I thought the conditions were going to look like and it was looking pretty perfect. So I think I sparked his interest again and um, I think he's just on the fence right about now. Yes! How are you, brother? Well, come on. What's up, buddy? Brother? How are you? How are you, man? Daz? I'm just gonna start it. Yes! Boys! Fucking legends for making it here. Like, boys that come from all around the world Walshie, Africa, Bruce, boys, Hawaii, America, LA, everywhere. So, massive thank you for all you boys coming. Yeah, so basically 16 surfers. What we want to do and the main idea of this was bring the UFC to surfing, like create a fight card format. We're all really good mates in this room, but in the media, when you guys are going to do your battle, talk as much shit as you can. Like, and deep down, <laughs> deep down, whoever's not talking shit is just scared to lose. Like, just talk it up. How are you going to beat them, man? <laughs> Thank you.
if, if anyone gets injured, we just want just a clear wave, like signal like that. Like I said, we don't really want to get in there unless we have to. It's uh, just so dangerous and there's no really room for error. So hopefully everyone's safe and enjoy the event. To get to the hotel for the surfers briefing and see like all these guys, like a whole bunch of international guys ready, you know, for the event in a couple of days and see how excited they were to actually be at a surf competition. It was, it was pretty special. I felt like things, you know, were working then. Mark Matthews, uh, what happens if there's a change in the conditions? You've been in charge of uh, yes knowing. What happens if we wake up on Sunday morning and? It's not gonna happen. <laughs> it's gonna be six to eight foot Sunday morning, perfect offshores. Yes, yes. And you're gonna have the world's best big wave surfers all doing battle in one of the craziest waves on the planet. That deserves so. a round of applause. Adam, how are you, buddy? Is it still wild and woolly out there, or what? There's no way you're not. It's not going to run. I like. I hate. <laughs> I hate saying that. I touch wood, but <laughs> it's got to be at least four to six foot, and then it's just the comment. It's going to be the commentators that make the event in that case. Like it's going to be up to them. I was still so stressed that the, the forecast was going to change and it wasn't going to be waves. And all these guys were here now in Australia and you know they'd flown from all over the world, changed their plans. And here they were just waiting for the call I had made. I just got super nervous at that stage. I just figured that you know I, I couldn't sit around anymore. Like nothing could grab my attention. So I, I just wanted to go and surf. I figured if I, if I go surf at least, you know, I won't think about what's going to happen tomorrow. I can just surf and have fun and enjoy enjoy that moment. I was never like an overly talented kid, like at any sport. Like I could do them all, but I was never excelled in any of them. And surfing was the same. Like I could surf, but I wasn't like a future world champ or anything like that. I ended up moving house when my parents split and lived next door to Kobe Abner. Started travelling with him all the time and chasing waves and we went on one trip when I was about, I think I was 17. It was kind of the first magazine trip I'd ever been on and uh, it was massive on the day. And I remember kind of like thinking, I, I gotta hold my own with the best big wave surfers at that time. But it wasn't until like I saw the photos and it just blew my mind like I'd never like dreamt as a kid of being able to surf a wave that looked like that and from there like my career just took off. I took off on kind of like a medium sized paddle wave, I caught a weird backwash off the cliff and I fell strange and just got sucked up into the lip. The lip just back slammed me straight into the reef, it didn't feel like there was any water on the reef, it just like felt like I went straight onto, onto dry rock almost. Eventually made it into the channel and um, I was like in heaps of pain but I just didn't want to like, I didn't want to believe that it had happened. I'd been putting this event on for two years and to get injured and not be able to surf, I was just like, would not accept it. 